They are just about to get underway in the opening match. It's the Bills at the Rams. We welcome for the first time on to the show. Been much looking forward to this. It is a, a podcast and, and, and social media football garbage time. Website, yeah. Website. The man is called Hakum Wong, and he joins us out of New York. Welcome to, back to New Zealand, my friend. How are you? <laughs> hey, thanks, Martin. Thanks for welcoming me in. I was just saying to, to Lachman, it's been 20 years since I've been back to New Zealand, so this is a nice blast back there for me. Okay, well, look, just tell us briefly then, what on earth are you doing here to start with, mate? What am I doing? Oh, in New Zealand? Yeah. I'm actually, so I was, uh, I was born in New Zealand. I was from Wellington. Okay. So uh, I was there many, many years ago, but only for about five years, so... Uh, you know, but I got my own, my, my, uh, sports fandom actually from growing up. Apparently when I was a baby, we grew across, I grew up across the street from a, um, a cricket field where the local cricket team had their practices. And I was the only thing that would keep me quiet was staring at them practice. So I started when I was one, basically I was in, I was in an organized sports since then and I've never looked back. So, uh, everything I do today all stems, believe it or not, from, growing up across the street from a cricket field. Well, I tell you what, if you were in New Zealand at the moment today, you wouldn't be sleeping if you were a baby. You'd be screaming uh, your lungs yeah. out, mate. The, the white cats? <laughs> yes, I am so aware. Let's uh, talk about the NF, oh, NFL yeah. and the opening match. I can see that the national anthem has been sung at the moment. So this is the one yeah. sport that just dominates everything about United States sport. It only goes for four months, people, this competition. And for the other eight months, it's, 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 it's post-match, it's pre-match. A hundred days out from when the NFL kicks <laughs> off, it dominates ESPN. You can have basketball finals on, you can have ice hockey. It doesn't matter. It is the biggest noise there is, right? That is very true. It's very true. And it's actually, you know, actually something that's happened over the last 10 to 15 years. I mean, it wasn't always that way. I think, you know, the, the, it was always Major League Baseball for the longest time. And then it was, became basketball during the Jordan era. And then football kind of caught up. And now here we are today. All right. So you've got Football Garbage Time. It's a website. It's a podcast. I love your byline, which says, waste time with us. So when did you start all this? <laughs> that's right. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, it's interesting because of the fact that I love talking sports and I actually used to work for another site called Football Extra Points, which is a Fox Sports affiliate. And, uh, the guy there actually asked me at one point whether I'd want to take over. And I said, you know what? I want to do something else. I want to do something that's less meaningful than what you have here. I'm going to start my own site. Uh, and he helped me kind of get it launched up. And if, if you guys all are aware of what garbage time means generally, in the NFL, and this is for all organized sports, it's definitely, it's definitely the end of games that are already a huge blowout. And the losing team's players, typically who are now subs or at times just really bad starters, they put up huge numbers that are completely meaningless in deciding the outcome of the game because it's already been a blowout. That's us, right? We're, we're the subpar players that look much better uh, here in garbage time. And that's why we won the football garbage time. You know, if you had your choice of podcast, maybe you look uh, someplace else. You have no choice. Hey, you squint really hard. We're not horrible. And that's why we came up with our phrase, waste time with us. Yeah, well, let's see, this is it. Garbage time is also a big thing in the NBA, isn't it? When you're up 20 or 30 points and the players get really annoyed if somebody yes, tries sir. to do a slam dunk or something like that. All right, this match to kick <laughs> us off. You know, I was looking at the ESPN Power Index the other day. They put the Bills at one, which is extraordinary for me, considering that they haven't actually won anything. Uh, the defending Super Bowl champs are the Rams. No one's gone back-to-back -back since 92 or 93. First and foremost, the chances of the Rams doing creating history, which hasn't happened for decades. Yeah, you know, I don't think that is, uh, it's not out of the question. Pants went back I mean, to when back, you look I'm at sorry. The NFC, there isn't, yeah, no, no, I was just going to say that, yeah, it, exactly. So I was going to say that I, I don't think it's out of the question that the Rams will repeat. I mean, I think that they have a very solid returning team on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, but they've had a number of changes that are incredibly critical. I mean, first of all, they've essentially replaced their wide receiver, Robert Woods, with Alan Robinson, who hasn't been good in a long time. And I know that because I'm a Bears fan. Alan Robinson was a Bears player for many years. And the last two or three years, he wasn't good. Uh, also, Rams Pro Bowl uh, left tackle Andrew Witt was retired after five years. The guy who protects Matthew Stafford's blindside. And, of course, their right guard, uh, starting right guard Austin Corbett, left to sign a $26 million deal with the Carolina Panthers. So that's not a great combo for the Rams offense when the guy's protecting the quarterback's blindside and one of your quarterback's top two targets are gone, particularly when your quarterback is also dealing with elbow tendonitis, all right? So not a great combo all the way around. We'll see how that all kind of sorts out uh, tonight because obviously that will be the first time that he has this kind of new lineup in his offensive line and new set of receivers outside of uh, 
you know, outside of Cooper Cup, of course. So we'll see what happens there. And, and there is a possibility they can repeat. It's possible. This is Hakum Wong and his website, his um, his podcast and everything is called Football Garbage Time. People, just get in touch with us, 505 on the text if uh, you want to latch on. All right then, so I'm going to talk about NFC East because that's where my pathetic team is. I'm a Skins fan and football <laughs> team. See, you're laughing. Oh, okay. man. Yeah, I know. And, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and Lachlan is an Eagles fan. Um, first and foremost, what is your oh, who is your you team? Guys really winners. Yeah, who's 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 I, I'm a team? Bears fan, so I also pick uh, a loser. I'm a, I'm a Bears fan, so we all can uh, wallow in pain all season together. All right, that's that. I think we can do that. Uh, I appreciate your guys' pain all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, this weekend, of course, and then and the matches are on a Sunday in, in the United States. They're on a Monday here. Is it still as popular as it was? Is it gaining even more popularity, this, this comp? Oh, absolutely. I think that there's a lot. I mean, first of all, there's a lot of accessibility. I mean, uh, there, there's much better um, access to all the games, and I think that's going to make it much more popular. And it's kind of uh, kind of... Uh, span the gender gap, you know, men and women both are into it now. I think because of the presentation value and because of the fact that they have uh, much, much more, like I said, acceptable accessibility in terms of the games and matches. I think the other aspect of this is that fantasy football is a big deal here, you know, and because of fantasy football, you've kind of drawn in a whole number uh, level of fandom that may not have been initially interested in NFL teams at all. And uh, that has, uh, in some ways, been responsible for the kind of explosion of fandom in the last 10 years, is kind of the explosion of people interested in fantasy football. So I, I, I think it's, there's, there's room to grow, for sure. It's already a spectacle. They made it 17 weeks, you know, and 18 and 17 games. You know, they're obviously looking at ways of expanding it. You can see what's happening in college football being affected the same way. Yeah. They just uh, voted to make the, you know, the championship uh, 12 teams instead of four. I mean, obviously, that's in response to the uh, the ratings and the viewership. You know, they're like, we can get more money from ads this way, and you can tell that this is uh, expanding all the way across uh, all areas of American football. Oh, also, there are games, of course, taken to London. Is there is there any plans to take them anywhere else? I mean, I'd be yeah. thinking that kind of like um, Japan, maybe somewhere in Asia, actually, and sort of start capitalizing on an audience which essentially football has got. Baseball's got a good hold, but American football, no. Yeah, you know, I think there's a little bit of a logistical issue. If you go in, in both East and West, I think that, you know, obviously time change is a big deal. Oh, if you look at the stats, right, and you look at East Coast teams and West Coast teams in the U.S., when they fly cross-country, they tend to do much worse. Uh, and it's really strange because it's only a three-hour difference, but they tend to do much worse when they, lay, when they travel for a game and have to travel back home the following week. And I think that they're worried about, you know, the way that this will impact players. Uh, if you want to go to London three times a year, that's fine. But if you – go to London every week, I think that's going to be difficult. And that's probably probably one of the challenges about, you know, UK getting a team uh, there full year round. I think it's just the, the thought, well, we're putting them at disadvantage because of the impact of travel. Uh, I think Asia would be even harder. <laughs> I think right. just, it would just be very challenging. Now, not to say that it wouldn't be popular. I just think from a logistical standpoint, it'd be very challenging. But, um, you know, obviously Canada, Mexico, any anything that's within uh, within flying short flying distance is, uh, is where they're capitalizing. They already – did Toronto, they've already done, you know, down in Mexico and they've in Mexico City. So I can see them expanding into all areas of Europe as well. I mean, Germany, obviously, they, they're all, uh, American football, so very popular there. Hakum Wong, it is Football Garbage Time. That's the man's website and that's his podcast as well. I noticed that you've, you're a journalist as well. So what's your, what's your day job? <laughs> I am, so don't hate me for this, all right? I'm a lawyer. I'm a lawyer at my day job. Oh, my God. Uh, I try to make up for it by being, by, by, by reporting on NFL so, so people like me a little bit. <laughs> that's, how, that's what I do. All <laughs> right. Finally, then, okay, I mean, it's so early in the season and, you know, prediction schmixons and things, but, um, okay, take Lachlan's Eagles out because they'll win the division. Yeah, you're, you're my lot, the Bears and the Commanders. I mean, we're just <laughs> woeful. Who's winning? Who's coming out of the AFC? Who's coming out of the NFC this early in the season? And we'll hold you to this in a few months' time. Well, you know, the, I mean, the Bills obviously are the ones that we're all looking at in the AFC, right? I mean, they obviously have, have they had, all, they're all, all cylinders firing from last year. Obviously, Josh Allen has a lot of ways to build from here. They, they are missing their starting uh, top corner, Tredavious White, tonight, so we might not get a full look at what their defense looks like, but the veteran safety, Jordan Poyer, is back. He's had a, a really exceptional year last year, learning a reception rate of 48.1%, career high, five interceptions, three sacks. And, of course, like we said, Josh Allen, 
uh, looking fantastic out there. And Stefan Diggs, um, uh, receptions leader last year. So clearly one of the best receiving targets in the NFL and Dawson Knox, of course, as well. The one thing that the Bills can work on, obviously, is their run game. And unfortunately, their new offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey, was a quarterback coach. So obviously we know he works very well with Josh Allen, but how will he impact that run game, which is clearly very important? Because last year we saw what happened between the Bills and the Chiefs, right? You leave the Chiefs 11 seconds, Patrick and Mahomes is going to score. Uh-huh. You can't leave 11 seconds. And if you can't run the ball, you can't run the clock out. So, you know, at the end of the day, that really hurts them, you know? And, and I think that they're going to have to make some changes, uh, not only on defense, but in their game planning to try to you know, enable that run game a little bit. So we'll see if they can do that tonight against a very challenging, strong Rams defense, which I think will be a good test for a week one matchup. Well, Rams, nine plays, 75 yards, touchdown! That opens the scoring in the NFL this season. <laughs> Fantastic talking to you, my man. Uh, wonderful. That's the Bills that scored that. And so we will be back in touch uh, next week, and we'll uh, look forward to, to, uh, to, to keeping with you every single week as we as we follow the NFL and the progress through the season. You're brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much, Martin, for having me, and I will talk to you all later. Okay. So, 7-0, there you go. Bills at Rams kicking off the NFL.